Hi guys, Lemmy here and welcome back to another video. Today's topic has been requested by quite a few subscribers. We're going to be talking about selling art commissions. So what is an art commission you say? Quite simply, a commission is money for artwork. You can sell commissions or artwork to customers. You can also buy commissions from someone else for money. It's the sale of original artwork that is made custom for the buyer. Commissions are different from requests. And I know that it seems silly to point this out, but I've gotten so many people over the years contacting me and asking me for free art under the impression that commissions do not cost money. If you want free art, the term you're searching for is art request. Today we're going to be talking about how to sell art commissions online. When I was younger, I began to sell my art on the internet and ended up doing it for many years, selling over a hundred commissions. Everything I know about commissions, I have taught myself and have never once had an issue with a customer, ever. I've taught these tips and tricks to friends when they first wanted to begin selling commissions as well, and they found it pretty helpful, so hopefully you guys will as well. First of all, you're going to need a base of operations. A place you can post your information about commissions and attract customers. Nowadays, this is usually a social media platform and less often a personal website. Social media like DeviantArt, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff are all great places to find potential customers and create a fan base for your art. If you don't have a social media following, chances that you get commissioned work is pretty slim simply because nobody knows who you are and they haven't seen what you can do. So get out there and begin to develop your social media so that you have clientele that you can sell to. In my personal experience, people will begin messaging you, asking if you sell art commissions. And at that point in your art journey, that is the time to start planning how to go about selling your work. I find that worrying about selling art commissions before being asked about it can be rather pointless. It's time consuming and energy consuming. If nobody is seeking to purchase from you, you can upload as many postings about commissions as you want, but you simply won't get anybody to buy. In the meantime, work on improving your artwork until you reach this step. Now that you have an interested customer, it's time to figure out what you're going to do and how you're going to present yourself. I'm going to be like straight up telling you right now, I absolutely hate it when people say they do commissions and to contact the artist to discuss pricing. Whenever I see an artist do that, I know 100% for sure that I am never ever going to buy anything from them, even if I was initially interested in purchasing. If someone's not upfront about what is for sale and wants to have long, complicated discussions with you prior to you even knowing if you can afford them, I don't bother with it. Art isn't some super complex thing that you need to have long, drawn out conversations about before you even figure out the artist's selling price range. The way I do it may seem much more complicated at first, but in the long run, it's much more simple. It cuts out a lot of the guesswork, confusion, and unnecessary discussion between the artist and the client. And I'm not saying don't be friendly to people, but what I'm saying is don't act like your product is so special that you can't list a price for someone to figure out if they can afford you or not. Unless you're like some crazy, successful, famous artist, you probably shouldn't be doing something like that. So instead, the way I sell is by selling commissions based on rules, guidelines, and pricing. Everything is upfront and written for your clients to see plainly. It takes a bit of time to put together all of your information, but it will save you time in the long run by being very clear as to what people will get for a specific price. That being said, there are quite a few things to take into consideration when selling a picture to someone. First of which, there are different ways to devise commission pricing. Because we're talking about this from my perspective, when I sold commissions, they all involved like anime, cartoon related characters. And it was obvious that whoever commissioned me specifically wanted to hire me to create a picture in that style. Many artists back then would devise their prices based on how much of the body that was drawn. So some would be portraits, which is like just the face. 
busts, which would be the face plus some upper body, to the knees, which is to the knees, or full body, which is pretty obviously the full body. The more of the body that you are commissioned to draw, the higher the price of what you're purchasing. It's important to make this step work for you. Perhaps you want to do full bodies and chibis with only two different options or prices for people to buy from. Or maybe you just want to do busts and busts only. Whatever you want to sell, just be clear about what it is that is for sale in your guidelines and what the price is for that specific item. Make sure you are comfortable about what you want to offer to your customers. If you don't want to draw chibis, don't offer chibis. If you want to only draw chibis, then only offer chibis. If you want to draw everything and anything under the sun, specify that you will take custom commissions, but the pricing varies for art that is not listed in your guidelines. If you are absolutely adamant about not drawing something specifically, you can also mention this in your listing. The way I personally organized what I offer was mostly based on the type of artwork it was. So back in the day, I would sell to the knees or full body for one price done in traditional media. I would also do full body chibis for a cheaper price, and I had Crayola Commission bust commissions, and I also had digital artwork. My prices varied on how much I enjoyed doing a certain task, but also how long it would take me to create the picture. So chibis and the crayon bust pictures were the cheapest, and the the knee like slashed full body traditional pictures were more expensive than that and then the digital would be the most expensive because it took me the longest. I had various commission options for people to pick from but also different prices to accompany them. That way people who had more or less money to spend could specifically pick and choose what best suited their budget. Another thing to consider is add-ons. For example, if someone wanted a simple background, it would be an additional fee. If someone wanted an extremely detailed character, that also would be an additional fee which varied based on the complexity of their character's design. Finally, if someone wanted a full landscape background, that would be considered a complex background and I would charge more for that. If you have an add-on option for your commissions, mention this in the listing so that people know that these additional features cost additional money. This also helps the buyer balance their budget. And it also helps the seller so that they're not taking advantage of by having someone ask for something super uber duper complicated and you're charging them the normal price. So this kind of helps alleviate that and it gives you some more money for your time. Another thing to take into consideration is what the buyer is exactly buying with their money. Are they buying the originals of the created art piece? Do you ship internationally? Do they want a digital copy and a digital copy only? Do they want a higher resolution image? As the seller, are you willing to even ship the original to the buyer? Does the buyer even want the originals? I mean, I had this one customer that I completed over like 20 plus commissions for, and never once did he want one of the originals sent to him. And around the 20th commission, I told him that if he paid for shipping once, I'd simply just lump all of his pictures together and send them to him in bulk. He never did take me up on the offer and it just completely blew my mind. An easy way to deal with this is making an add-on option to pay for shipping to the buyer, specifically the price for your own country versus like international shipping if you even want to do international shipping. This would cause my client to tell me if they expected to receive the original copy or not, which would avoid a whole bunch of confusion in the long run. Now, the last part about guidelines, but what might be the most important, is to show samples of your work. And I cannot stress enough the importance of showing examples of your work. Don't just show one picture, show multiple pictures that have reliable outcomes. If you're selling chibis, show a few artworks of chibis. Make sure that the quality of the work reflects the quality of the work that the customer will receive. I cannot stress enough, do not show your best artwork. Instead, show what is realistic for them to receive. 
You're not going to show the most amazing picture that you accidentally created. What you want to do is show something where you can replicate the quality of the piece reliably. This helps your customer know exactly what they're going to get for the price and what they should be expecting from you. While you need to have artwork of a certain standard, you can always do a better job on a piece. If anything, you want to surprise your customer with how nice the picture is that they received. If you choose to go above and beyond with what you give, that's your choice. But make sure that the product someone receives from you is at least the quality of your samples in your listing. Nobody wants to get a commission that they paid for that has disappointing artwork. Plus, that guy won't recommend you to anyone else, and if they do talk about you, they won't say anything good. So create artwork of the same quality of the samples, or better. You never want to under-deliver to your customer. At this point in the video, we covered how to gain a fan base, when you know that you're ready to sell, and how to figure out what you're presenting to sell to your customers. The more specific you are about what you're selling, the less confusion there will be between the seller and the buyer. You want your buyer to know exactly what they're going to get for the price and then give them exactly what you promised. Next up is the disclaimer section. This is for things that you want every customer to know regarding their commissions. You should have some bullet points about how your artwork is for personal use only and not at all intended for commercial use or resale. You should mention that originals will not be shipped unless the buyer specifies that they would be. I also mentioned that it's not my responsibility to hold onto a commission and preserve it for extended periods of time because the commission might spontaneously combust or my dog might eat it or I might sit on it and many years later I might be unable to send it to them. So it's not my responsibility to archive your piece. You can also write a section about time-sensitive commissions. If not specified at the time of purchase, you are not beholden to finish it within the buyer's time frame. For example, if Pete wants to buy a commission and gives you the payment, and the next day he says, I need it tomorrow, you don't have to be beholden to that, as it clearly states that you must be forewarned about things like that. Anything you can think of that might create a problem in the future, you should list in the disclaiming section. For example, if you ship commissions with tracking, promise that you will give the tracking information when the product is shipped. However, you may not want to be responsible if the post office ruins or loses the package. Explain that it's the buyer's responsibility to pay additional for insurance if they so want it, and if the package is lost, it's their responsibility to work with the post office to recover damages and all that. Essentially, the more specific you are about what the person will get for the money, the better. So when someone orders a commission, you need to translate what they want into your guidelines. Break it down for them financially in a receipt-like fashion. Then confirm in your own language what it is that they want. If the buyer agrees that this is what they're ordering and the price it should be based on the guidelines, then you can go ahead and get to the payments section. So all you need to do is get paid, right? And I find that the best way to transfer money for commissions is through PayPal. PayPal protects both the buyer and the seller. If you're buying, you can get the buyer protection time period, and if you're selling, it's an easy way to collect the funds, but also you'll be able to defend yourself if you have an issue with your customer. You know, or vice versa. If your customer receives something that isn't what they paid for, they can take it up with PayPal as well. PayPal will act as a mediator and you can provide documentation of everything you have provided to the customer and how you've kept your word. This is where all those annoying details of earlier came in handy. You can now show the receipt where you calculated exactly what you were going to give them for what price. You can show the image that was given to the seller and even the tracking shipping information along with the disclaimer information. You can really make a rock solid case for yourself. If you did what you said you would for the buyer. If you didn't, you might have another problem because the buyer can also make a rock solid case for why they deserve a refund if you did not adhere to your own rules and guidelines. Pretty straightforward, right? To be completely honest with you, I never had this happen with a customer of mine, but I was always ready for it and I always looked 20 steps ahead before I left. So if anything were to happen, I would have already covered all of my bases. And finally, we're going to talk about the order of operations regarding payment. You should never, 
ever start a commission before you have received partial or full payment for the commission. Nothing is worse than wasting your time working on something that you'll never get paid for. And even worse than that is giving the finished piece or an update to someone who hasn't given you any money. You can very easily be scammed if you do not get paid at the beginning before starting your artwork. When I did commissions, I would only take full payment before starting the commissions. I mean, I was too busy to do partial payments or half payments, like start now, then pay when you're done. I would only take full payments and then the buyer would then be added to my list of commissions that I had to do. If someone was low on money, I would simply tell them that I'm not going anywhere and if slash when they can afford the picture to let me know. But taking partial payments is more complicated than I ever wanted to get into and I don't recommend it but other artists seem to do it frequently. So this is where it gets complicated. If you decide to take partial payments, my advice is that when you take the percentage of the payment, then you have to give the buyer a percentage of the piece. For example, if they paid for one third of a picture, I might give them a sketch. I wouldn't continue the picture until I receive the next payment. Never complete more of the picture than you're paid to complete. This is really up to you how you accept your payments, but for me, it was always easiest to simply take full payment. I mean, I could be working on 10 commissions at any point in time, so it was easiest for me just to receive the payment at the beginning. I also would keep my followers apprised of how their commissions were coming along and at what step they were in production. I actually never sent progress pictures to my clients as my guidelines were extremely clear. I would only do so if I felt that I needed clarification or if I wanted to make an extremely stylistic choice. but never as a regular exercise. A lot of people seem to give regular works in progress shots to their customers, but I would complete my commissions rather quickly and this seemed to waste my time. I also never had anyone complain about a picture I made or were unhappy with the results, so I never really had to reflect or change my guidelines for this. Just be sure to receive the money before completing your work. Remember the saying, time is money. So don't put in the time if you haven't been paid. Keep in mind everything I listed here is about selling commissions privately. Doing freelance work for companies is completely different. Usually a company will pay much more for work being done and will pay after the work is complete. If you are doing work for a company, please make sure that they are reputable. A lot of companies on the internet aren't what they seem, especially ones that sell on platforms like eBay or Amazon or things like that. If it's not a major company, then you shouldn't trust them, as it's probably in reality a small group of people or even just one person asking for work. If that's the case, get paid beforehand. Don't let yourself get taken advantage of by others. What you're doing is work and you should be paid for it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I talk like way too much and I can't even, uh. <laughs> and hey, if you're wondering, but what do I sell my pieces for? You know, like, how do I find my price? I'll have a video about that next week as that is another topic that requires a bit of discussion. If you guys have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm sure there will be things I didn't cover and I will make a comment responding to frequently asked questions and pin it to the top of the comments for you guys. So please be sure to check there for answers to questions that you may have. As always, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you again real soon. You guys take care of each other.